hope you are doing great and good to see you here let me just open the slideshow so in this video we are going to talk about spectrogram and mill spectrogram basically so what is mill spectrogram it's a specialized type of spectrogram which is primarily used in audio processing and audio analysis uh, the thing which we are going to do in couple of videos uh, after this uh, so that's why i think we should first start from the basic and uh, this is the technique which i'm going to focus a lot uh, on this is a mill spectrogram and uh, now let's talk about what is this actually a spectrogram so a spectrogram a uh, standard spectrogram displays the frequency content of a audio signal over the particular period of time so if you have a audio file in your uh, computer or anywhere you just uh, can convert that audio file into this representation which is nothing but representation of the frequencies and the amplitudes over a uh, over the given time range so at this particular moment what was the frequency what was the amplitude if you can get these features uh, out of that so that's called a spectrogram and the visual representation is called a spectrogram uh, on the x-axis uh, there's time and on the y-axis there is frequency and uh, if you see the intensity of the color over here and over here there is a difference between the intensity of the color the darkness so this all represent about the amplitude of the frequency at particular time so whether the sound was high pitch low pitch uh, you know all those kind of features are ingrained into this uh, spectrogram somehow now uh, let's talk about what's the difference between a spectrogram and a mill spectrogram so a mill spectrogram <clears throat> is basically a is a version of a normal spectrogram where we use something called mill scale uh, on the frequency axis so uh, what is uh, this mill scale uh, we'll talk about that but what does it do actually uh, it is basically why we do it we convert that into mill scale because mill scale uh, very closely aligns with the human auditory perception how do human perceive the sounds so that's why uh, this particular thing called mill spectrogram is widely used in the speaker recognition and machine learning task when you are processing human uh, speech so now coming back to what is mill scale mill scale is a perceptual scale that uh, that approximates the human hearing and what it does is basically it compresses higher frequencies and it expands the lower frequency what i mean by that is basically a logarithmic uh, thing uh, you will realize when i talk about the formula but uh, what does this actually mean that the lower frequencies are more spaced together are uh, and uh, spaced more closely together as compared to the higher frequencies so this is this actually reflects how the human perceive the sound so uh, what i was saying that mill scale is a logarithmic function uh, so <clears throat> where uh, you can also calculate the mill frequency if you know the actual frequency uh, i think the formula was some multiplication factor uh, yeah that multiplication factor is actually 2592 so this uh, is constant that is multiplied to a log base 10 of uh, your frequency in the format like 1 plus f divided by 700 where f is your frequency in the hertz so after doing all this calculation taking log of that multiplying that with this factor you get the mill frequency uh, this is how you can see uh, i have plotted a graph if this is the actual frequency which is dotted green line so uh, so uh, no actually the dotted uh, blue line is the actual frequency so the dotted green line will be your mill frequency uh, so now it's clear what is mill scale what is mill frequency the most important thing you should know why do we do that because uh, of the human perception uh, that's why we do um, scaling on this uh, mill scale now let's talk about how to actually construct a mill spectrogram if you have a particular audio signal uh, looking like this how does it converge to something mill spectrogram which i showed you which looks like this right so there are four steps basically first step is windowing so what does windowing means you uh, basically take out windows out of the whole audio file after that taking uh, uh, after windowing you do the second step is your short time fourier transform okay uh, we'll talk about that what we do in actually in this so after uh, we do a, part, a Fourier transform on a particular window it gives us some kind of a frequency uh, 
representation which uh, we convert uh, into mill frequency using the just formula which is just talked about the logarithmic thing and uh, once you get that mill frequency for a mill frequency representation for an audio file the final step is the decibel scaling or logarithmic scaling which is just uh, basically for visualization purpose uh, now let's uh, get deep into every step so first is windowing i think this is a uh, very basic and uh, very uh, self understandable which is uh, you basically take out the small small segments out of the audio and uh, all uh, these segments are called windows now each window we analyze separately to calculate the short term fourier transform now this is the main part what is the short term fourier transform uh, what do you do for each window we apply something called fast fourier transform what it does it converts your time domain signal into frequency domain signal so you had time and the amplitude of your voice at a particular time so that can that gets converted into your frequency signals like what was the frequency at a particular time as you can see in this graph this is the time range and this is the frequency so that was the uh, most important thing which we needed and uh, now we were going to convert this frequency representation into mel frequency representation so for that we use mel filter bank application so uh, the resulting frequency spectrum uh, uh, out of this fourier transform then processed over the set of overlapping triangular filters so what this triangular filter do uh, this map your frequency to the mel scale frequency so this is how those looks like this is the mel bands right uh which helps us to get the uh mel frequency basically now uh, after this step now your uh, normal frequency has converted to the mel frequency now the final step is your uh logarithmic scaling or your decibel scaling uh what happens the amplitude values are converted to decimal so that uh, which enhances the visual uh, representation of lower amplitude sound and also it aligns this with the human sensing sen uh, human hearing sensitivity so uh, this is the decibel scaling looks like and uh, here you can see basically uh, how does a actual human will perceive the sound and where the amplitude is high and where it's low so this is the final mel spectrogram looks like i also wanted to show you the implementation code let me show you that ha huh. so this is the basic libraries we need uh, we need numpy we need librosa uh, mainly we need uh, librosa numpy is a dependency of librosa only uh, so this uh, i had a particular audio file and i just loaded that audio file using the librosa and i got sample rate and the samples audio samples so this is how the signals look like audio signal looks like the first step was to uh, can what uh, so windowing was the first step which this does uh, on the uh, yeah it's being done on the back end so uh, over here the first thing which you will see is the <clears throat> stft uh, short term fourier transform short time fourier transform but uh, when we are doing that actually uh, the windowing is just pre uh, like one of the part within this complete uh, uh, within this complete uh, stft you know so after that what we got we got the frequency representation the basic frequency representation now this is the mel frequency uh, conversion how do we convert that into a mel frequency this thing which we got uh, from the stft and uh, finally we just do the decibel scaling uh, so that uh, now it is into the uh, format where we can uh, visualize the human sensitivity and the uh, audio signal in the mel spectrogram format so this is the basic simple code for uh, mel spectrogram uh, creation right if you have any audio file now you can create a mel spectrogram using this thing uh, why we are studying this this is very important uh, and widely used in the uh, domain of speech analysis speech analysis uh, comprise of uh, you know uh, various things like your uh, i can give you some of the topics like uh, emotion detection and uh, obviously pitch uh, and uh, high pitch low pitch sounds uh, and there's something called cough detection also which people do using mel spectrogram what i want to do is a uh, speaker identification using mel spectrogram that is one of the research areas that uh, i'm really interested in and uh, after that uh, 
not only uh, speech analysis i have seen mel spectrogram getting used in speech synthesis also and that's really surprising because um, uh, how we can enhance the tts capability text to speech system uh, using the intermediate representation of mel spectrogram and that's widely used if you heard about tachotron model you uh, might found a research paper something like natural tts using a uh, you know a some mel spectrogram thing so uh, the tachotron uses it uh, for uh, text to speech generation and a couple of other models also uses it but um, yeah so we need to uh, see these things like how does mel spectrogram is widely used in the uh, voice ai uh, thing so uh, upcoming videos will be about that and uh, yeah thank you guys for being here so goodbye take care